phone rings. She's 17, 18 years old maybe by the sound of her voice, but I can't tell between her sons. She asks if we have any beds open. There's no room, I say. Apologizing in as many ways as I can while only saying, I'm sorry, we're full. I'm a youth counselor at a homeless shelter on the north side of Minneapolis. And between cooking meals, conducting poetry workshops, and the obvious positions of a counselor, there is always a clanging orchestra of phones. Someday I turn away as many as 20 teens. Today, it's just one, but I wonder if she can hear me break. I close my eyes, pull the phone from my ear, I hold it above me like a shower head. I can feel the weight on her breath, and I let every word slide out. When I was young, I poured water into the receiver, hoping it would leak out of someone's face 200 miles away. I knew just enough about fluids to believe water could move that way. The first time she calls and I hold it above my head, I wonder why her sobs don't drip from the phone. I listen to her, gasping for breath as the room she calls from begins to fill with water. The city is overflowing. Water has been running through gutters and sidewalk cracks, forcing its way beneath bridges and other park benches. The city is overflowing. Water will not stop moving until it finds a place to sleep. These kids are packed into alleyways and bus stations, crushed in the ghosts by the shipwreck of a city. Frozen specters walking the streets until dawn blanketed by their last ounce of pride. Do you know how heavy an ocean is? As a youth worker, it isn't my bones to save the world, but in the silence of a phone call, when both of us are too afraid to hang up, I'm reminded of just how heavy it is, of just how weak I am. I pray they notice it's the same person when they call. I'm at the shelter every night. I hope they understand that means I'm sitting in an office that my bed at home is empty. I've developed my own language, telling them to move like water. I give directions made entirely of apologies. I pray they notice I say I'm sorry differently each time. I'm sorry. Across the river to the West Bank. I'm sorry we're full. Head down Franklin Avenue past the Hall Market. I'm sorry there are no more beds to the left on Clinton. I'm sorry. Please keep calling to right on 24. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. There's nothing more I can do. 11, the blue house with the white door, the spare keys under the floor, but my bedroom is the last one on the left. I want you to find it. Each phone call is like watching someone else's life flash before your eyes. I am half youth counselor, half executioner. This phone is an accent. They click out with gunfire, the dial tone, a flat line. The best I can do is pretend that this phone stuck to my hand is not an anchor. The best I can do is remember the first time I dove and in the ocean understood why the human iris has always felt infinite. The best I can do is pray that this phone never stops ringing. Because the days do come when I don't have to apologize, when there's a bed open, when I can feel somebody else's weight lifted, and they are finally given the chance to swim.